Hi, so in this lecture, we are going to see a formal definition of DFA. This formal definition will be very useful to prove various properties of DFA, and it is especially important to prove that things cannot be recognized by DFAs. If you have to convince me that something does have a DFA, it's typically enough for you to draw a picture. But if you have to convince me that something cannot be computed by a DFA, then a picture is not enough. You need a formal proof based on the formal definition of a DFA. And it will also be useful for us to practice mathematical notation. So the state diagram of a DFA is made of what? It's made of one or more states. It is made of exactly one star state. And we allow for uh, one or more some number of accept states. Then we have label transitions exiting each state for any possible symbol in the input alphabet sigma. Okay, these are the features that we want to capture with the definition. And here is our definition. A finite automaton, DFA, is a five tuple Q sigma delta Q zero F, where Q is a finite set of states, sigma is the input alphabet, delta is the transition function. So the transition function has to tell you where you go, okay, for any possible state and any possible symbol that uh, you read. So it's a function that's going to map the set Q cross sigma of order pairs A, B, where A is in Q and B is in uh, sigma to the set Q of states. Okay. So to give an example, if you have three states, Q, R, S, and the input alphabet is 0, 1, then the set of order pairs would be this. It's a set of size 6. Okay, and then we identify one specific element of Q, which we're going to call Q0 as the star state. And we have some number of accept states, so we denote by F a subset of F, which is a set of accept states. Okay, here, here is an example of a DFA, and this DFA is a 5 tuple, okay, Q sigma delta Q0 F. So Q here would be the set Q0, Q1, sigma 0, 1. And what is delta Q0, 0? It's again Q0, right? This is this error here. What about delta Q0, 1? Again, when you see a question mark, you can pause and think about it. That's where learning happens. Delta Q0, 1 is Q1. Okay, and so on and so forth for the others. Q0 in Q is the star state. And what is F? F is the set that contains just Q0. Okay, we define F to be a set. So in this case, F is a set, a singleton set of Q0. All right, so, so far so good, but we're interested about computation, okay? So here is the definition of computation. We're going to say that, that a DFA accepts a string W if the following things happen. You can write W as W1, W2, dot, dot, WK, where for every I, WI is a symbol in a sigma. These are just the K symbols of W. So, so far, I'm not doing anything really um, too interesting. I'm just writing W. I'm just I'm just writing the symbols of W, so I can talk about them later with some more complicated uh, automata. Uh, we're gonna do some more interesting decomposition. Here I'm just writing down the symbols of W. Okay. Well, when you accept, well, if you go through a sequence of states, which eventually uh, will end up in accept state, right? So. If you look at the sequence of k plus 1 states, r0, r1, dot, dot, rk, where what? 
Um, Ri is the state that the DFA is in after reading the i symbol in W. So R0 will be the star state, okay? And Ri plus one would be the state which is obtained from delta when you are in state Ri and you read the i plus one symbol from the input. Well, this sequence has the last state in F. That's when you accept. And we call this sequence the trace or the computation history or the computation table or array of the DFA on input W. Okay, is the sequence of states that the DFA goes through. As usual, let's see an example. Here is a DFA. Uh, we claim that this DFA accepts W equal to 0, 1, 1. So let's see. Here is, so let's match it with our previous definition. Here is how you write W, 0, 1. I'm going to write the three symbols of W, 0, 1, 1. And we must show that the trace of the DFA on W ends in F. Okay, that is, I want the sequence of 3 plus 1, 4 states, R0, R1, R2, R3, such that the first one is a star state, and then every next state is obtained from the previous one uh, by reading the corresponding symbol in the input and applying delta. And the last state has to be in F. Okay, so let's look at this trace. R0 is Q0, what is R1? R1 is a delta R0 W1. W1 is just the first symbol, which is a zero. It's delta Q0, zero, zero, which is Q0. R2 is delta R1 W2, okay, which is delta Q0, one, because the second symbol is a one, which is Q1. And R3 is delta R2 W3, uh, which is delta Q1, one, which is Q0. R3 is Q0, which is in F, is an element of F, and so you can, done. This string is accepted. Okay, so we're going to define for a DFA M, the language L of M to be the set of strings that cause M to accept. In terms of terminology, we are going to say that M accepts or recognizes the language L of M. Okay? And we make an important definition. Now we are going to say that a language L is regular okay? if it is the language of some DFA, if there exists a DFA M whose language is L. So this is our definition of regular languages, and later we're going to see several other equivalent definitions, um, which also, uh, you know, indicate uh, the importance of regular languages, because you have several different definitions of the same object. Okay. In the next lectures, we are going to um, understand the power of regular languages.